So I'm having a chat with Raquel from Dream Wife. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's uh, start off and have a little chat about your latest single, which is called Temporary. Tell us about the single. It's it's written about friendship mm-hmm. and being being present in the lives of the people that you love. And it's also about sort of going through waves of difficulties and having hope Mm. at the end of it. It's written about a dear friend of ours that went through, her and her partner went through multiple miscarriages in a span of a year. Mm. And to be able to be there and to be present by her side and watch her go through all this physical and also emotional pain yeah. um, through doing that again and again. And it's not often spoken about in you know, the media or not even in our social groups, you know? Mm. Yeah, and uh, definitely all the best to your friend and fingers crossed this time round. Um, and... She actually had a baby yesterday. Oh, amazing. It was when I told her the song was going to be a single, and it was around just by sheer coincidence. It was around her due date. Ah. So that was pretty amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. Um, and this single is taken off your uh, second album, which is released next week. What can you tell us about the album? I like it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're really excited for this release because... Yeah, we just really got to sink our teeth into the songwriting process and and curate a combination of songs that we thought would just really take you as a listener through a journey. Mm. And yeah, I think that's probably what I would say. Good. And uh, I'm it was I didn't put... to hear it. Yeah. Nice well, I've heard it. So, it so, so you heard it. Oh, I cool. have. I'm, and I'm loving it. I can't wait to uh, to play it all on the on the show and station in the in the oh, next few weeks you. once it's out. So um, yeah, and it was created by an entirely female team as well. What was the reasoning behind that? Um, well, we worked with a producer called Marta Solangi, and she is by far one of the most talented producers working in the game right now. And she assembled this amazing team of people. Mm-hmm. Grace Banks engineered it and Habak Hadri mastered it. We felt really lucky to be able to get to work to Marta. And she like cleared her schedule for us, which is pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. And we just made this incredible connection as friends and as a kind of yeah, kind of a collective of groups. And we yeah. We were so fortunate. But we also thought it was really important to be able to work um, with a team that also highlighted women behind the scenes Mm. in music, which is often, again, not really spoken much about. But even, like, through working with Marta, like, she was telling us all these different stories about how she was starting out and, and even sort of stories that she had heard about you know, the 90s, early 2000s, and a lot of the exclusion of women in the studio, um, in the kind of the tech side to it, that I had no idea about. And even like modern day, like she told us that less than 5% of albums released last year had a woman producer on it. Mm -hmm. Wow. On it. (laughs) Maybe as a co as well. So it was like, it was such a massive gap there mm. that we didn't actually realize until we started working together and yeah but of course we didn't hire Marta because she was a woman we hired her because she was the best person mm. for this job yeah absolutely that's important. yeah no definitely um and once the uh once the second album's out I'm sure you can't wait to be out on the road as soon as possible and you've even got some dates booked in for next year yeah, let's hope they happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, we. it's been interesting. Even, like, for example, like, you hearing the album, 
that's pretty amazing to us because usually we would have put a lot of these songs into our set already mm. to sort of get a reaction that's quite helpful for us to but these are like most of the songs on the album we've never played live and it's made in this kind of uh, rehearsal studio environment which is quite different from our first album which we played so much live during the making of that album that the most important factor of our first album was getting the live sound down but the factor in this album is just really sinking our teeth into the songwriting process. Mm. So I'm quite excited to be able to play these songs live because they haven't, the majority yeah. of them haven't been played live. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you've been keeping a bit busy during, uh, during lockdown. You've uh, created a podcast. And tell us about that and, and what else you've been uh, up to. We were actually quite fortunate. We recorded the podcast at the end of February, beginning of mm. March. So we had all this material to dig through. Um, yeah, we've basically been preparing this album, like finishing music videos and various other projects that are around releasing an album. I went back to Iceland, where mm. I'm from. Uh, my family is here. When lockdown started in England. Yeah, and the girls have been, they live together in London. Mm. And they have a garden that they've changed into this vortex of creativity. (laughs) (laughs) They're always having like garden raves. (laughs) And the neighborhood kids are like jumping on their trampolines. (laughs) (laughs) I bet you wish you were that. No, I'm actually quite fortunate I'm in Iceland right now because Mm. the government really stepped back and let the health workers and scientists lead the way, mm-hmm. which meant that we didn't have to go into lockdown. And uh. today, it's everyone talks of COVID as past tense. Mm. So today, there's actual concerts happening in this country. And there's, I think there's one case but it's very monitored and everyone can get tested and it's quite a different thing from England. Mm. So I've had a lot of freedom here that I don't take for granted. Yeah, definitely. Because it sucks seeing how things have been yeah. sort of happening in England and, and you know, the government to blame of how they reacted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, nice definitely. to the government, like, just to take a step back and be like, scientists, you lead the way. And we'll yeah. take care of the finances. So it's like, it's like actually the first time I've ever been proud of this government, ever. <laughs> and then you look to England and you're like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> this is complete opposite. And it's just really, I'm quite torn between that, being from a place and then having lived in you know, England for years and just seeing. Yeah, proud to be Icelandic at the moment then. Well, I'm, I don't know if proud is the right word. I think I'm just... When I was a teenager, I complained a lot about living <laughs> on an island up in the north, which was freezing cold, Yeah. and uh, didn't have many people on it, and I remember just complaining a lot, um, <laughs> and now I'm quite thankful that I'm from an island, island <laughs> up in the north that none of will come to, so that, but also just the fact of how, you know, literally just how governments behave. You can cl- clearly see it now how much it affects their citizens more than ever. 